And folks, I'm so excited today to have as my guest here on the show, Corey Boatwright. And uh, Corey and I, we just first uh, got to know each other. I guess it was about, uh, I guess maybe about a year ago, but my lands, I've been following him on his website and getting his emails for years. And before I bring Corey here on the, on the uh, show live, let me just give you a little bit of background on Corey. Um, Corey is like nobody else, like I know, when it comes to like social connecting. And, you know, one of the first talks that I heard Corey give was on, um, was on servant leadership in this mastermind that we're in together. But a little bit about his background. Um, he's a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he's started, he's run several multi-million dollar companies in several industries, a few of which include, of course, real estate investing, business consulting, internet marketing, uh, mobile technology, et cetera. So he's also the founder of several companies, uh, one called House Kings. He's also got Real Estate Investing Profits, uh, which is a phenomenal uh, coaching business uh, and company. He's got phenomenal results coaching, and between himself and his teams and his students are all over the world. He has sold, listen to this, folks, he has sold over $75 million dollars in real estate acquisitions and he's completed over listen to this 1000 real property transactions including but not limited to over 100 unit multifamily land private investments etc so corey's companies they buy and sell over 100 properties per year in the greater oklahoma city metro area and today he teaches high achieving entrepreneurs and their teams to getting phenomenal results in their businesses. Um, my lands, he's been in the Wall Street Journal, uh, he's been um, Harvard University, Fast Company Magazine, that's just a, a few of the leading organizations that view him and consider him, rightfully so, as a thought leader and a visionary. He lives in Oklahoma with his wife Leslie and their two kids. Corey, my friend, welcome to the show, my man. My lands, Jay Cotter. <laughs> Thank you for having me on here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. I've just been so excited to have you come on as, uh, as one of my special guests, Corey. I tell you, you know, when I first met you in person, um, I knew that I wanted to hang around you a lot. You got a servant's heart. You love people. You really care about people. And beyond that, I mean, you know, you're a pretty smart guy when it comes to real estate investing and, and you know, your, your, your experience and, and the many years you've been doing it. So let's have a conversation, Corey, about one of my favorite subjects, and that's Corey Boatwright. Let's talk about <laughs> Corey. Um, so let's start out with this, Corey. How about tell um, my listeners and viewers uh, your background as to what it looked like before you got into real estate investing. Sure. Well, thank you for having me, Jay. I appreciate you saying those things. It really means a lot to me. I've also seen you uh, really just give so much to people. I've learned a lot from you, Jay, um, just being a part of our mastermind together with Collective Genius. Also watching what you're doing uh, out there and serving your folks and uh, really just a tremendous leader uh, yourself. And I really appreciate uh, you having me on here and appreciate you saying those things. Thank you. Um, so if before real estate, I really got involved with just about everything you could possibly think of. And I'm, I'm not even kidding. Whenever uh, I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which so many people have read, uh, it's the nine out of 10 businesses fail. And I got really excited about that, Jay. I bet. The reason I got excited is because I knew I just had to start 10 businesses and one of them suckers are going to succeed. So I had some really uh, big, uh, uh, and I still do to this day, I have some big drive and uh, persistence is not something I lack whatsoever. I grew up in a uh, home in Weatherford, Oklahoma, very small town. Um, my dad passed away when I was really young, and so I was raised by my mother and my two older brothers. And uh, really, one brother got into being an athlete, uh, all stated in football and baseball. The other uh, brother was a rodeo guy, rode bulls, and basically take apart anything, put it back together. And I was the guy that was 
uh, doing all the negotiating. I was trading my Transformers for G.I. Joe, and then I had uh, baseball cards I got into, Jay, and then I just I started working all these different jobs. I sold Kirby home cleaning systems uh, for many, many years, and uh, I started all kinds of different uh, kind of like these little Amway type businesses, Jewel Way. I had a uh, company called TNC uh, Video, which my, my, my friend and I put together for legal uh, reps that were running back and forth with, um, with these uh, legal tapes that needed to be uh, given over to, gave, gave over to the judge. And uh, we, we, we basically made a better version of that uh, mouse, mouse trap. And uh, that, that lasted about six months. And I got involved with all these different kinds of things. And it wasn't until I really uh, stumbled uh, kind of into real estate investing, uh, becoming a bird dog and watching a, a, a friend of mine uh, do some big things with real estate. And I just wanted to learn about it. And I didn't know that you don't know what you know, don't know, right? So I didn't know that you didn't need any money to uh, do real estate. I thought you did. I thought you had to go to some fancy uh, college to get some crazy degree to, to be a real estate investor, to get involved with real estate. Um, I really just didn't know much about it. Um, I uh, was excited about learning more about real estate because of one reason. I had one company that after all those different companies that kind of failed or I failed forward or I learned what I didn't want to do, whatever you want to call it. I call it now gathering data every time uh, I learn something I don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Market research. The market research. So I gathered data, Jay, and uh, I, I started a company uh, in my bedroom, grew it to almost uh, $4 million and I sold it. It was a plasma electronics company. And I did that uh, right after I was selling 10,000 Ginsu knives a month on eBay. Uh, when I tell you I got really uh, persistent on, on this whole business thing, I, I really jumped in. And I was a domain broker before that. I did all these things, but the plasma TV business did well. And I sold that company. And then I got into real estate because one of the customers that I sold plasma t uh, TVs to, he bought a lot of TVs. And I remember meeting him. And I remember his name is John and I remember uh, talking to John and asking him about his wealth and, and basically how he built everything he built. He was uh, one of the founders or one of the co-founders of Christidis grocery stores. And uh, he basically was uh, just really wealthy with, with all these different things he was doing. And I met him and I had a conversation about what was it that really took you to that next level? What is it that, uh, helped you kind of leverage this wealth and, and, and start having this uh, momentum. And without a hesitation, he said, real estate investing, real estate investing. And mm -hmm. I knew, um, and that wasn't the first time I heard that, but I knew there was something to this real estate investing. And there's, there is a reason why uh, you'll see many people that are successful and wealthy get involved with real estate investing. It's because you can do so much with it. There's so many ways that you can make money, you can save money for taxes, you can build a legacy for your family, for generations to come, and learning about what I call specialized knowledge in real estate investing. But it wasn't until I sold that company, Jay, to answer your question, that I really started to get involved uh, with real estate investing. And what year was that, that you uh, started in real estate? So I, I would say my first year really going at it hard and, 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 and really uh, understanding the game of, of flipping and all of that was, I've been doing that for about 17 years. So what is that, 2002, okay. 2001? Okay. You got, you, got, you got two years on me. I've been at 15 years. 15 years. So I'm 42. And so... I sold, I bought my first house when I was 21 years old, but I right. didn't know really what I was doing. So I don't count that. Right. I got you. I got you. So, yeah. Good. So you said an interesting word as you were describing your, what life looked like 
which is very exciting, what life looked like prior to real estate investing. And what you said in the sentence was, I don't lack drive and I'm persistent. So I want to hone in for a moment on the word drive. Mm. So you, you, you had all this stuff going on. So where does that come from? Have you ever asked yourself the question, why am I like I am when it comes to drive, drive, drive like a rhinoceros? I, I totally am. And, and it's funny you mentioned that. I've got these literally sitting right here by my desk. <laughs> you can't I love see what I'm showing Jay right now. It's a, <laughs> I love it. And I don't got just one, Jay. I got two. You got two. There you go. I love it. I, well, you know, the reason I said the word rhinoceros is I was just last week turned on to the book, Rhinoceros Success. Have you heard of Rhinoceros Success? Love it. No, Scott Alexander. I've been talking to him, trying to get him on a show. So love it. Yes. There you go. So what, where does all this drive comes from and what is it that just keeps you driving and driving and driving? Yeah, that's a great question. And I have delved into this a little bit. Uh, but uh, it, it goes deeper, but I'll give you a top surface answer. Um, it's because my father passed away when I was really young and I did not have a, I did not have that figure, that, that, that father figure growing up. And so I had to really fend my oldest brother is five years older than I am. Uh, my other brother is three years older than I am. So you imagine whenever you're, you know, 17 years old, you don't want to hang out with 12 year old. And so uh, my mom worked so much, Jay, my mom actually has a plaque for working 10 years in a row without taking a single day off work. Wow. I remember the time my mom was coughing sick and she would still go into work. The last time I, it's my mom was an amazing worker. She also uh, was a Mary Kay. Uh, so I'm sorry to say my mom got, gave me a lot of that DNA. But one of the questions that you didn't ask I, that I've always asked is, can you teach drive? Well, you didn't give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if I want the kind of drive that, uh, that, that Corey Boatwright's got, how do I drink some of that juice? <laughs> can you teach drive? I've often thought about that question a lot. You know, um, I believe that your experiences in life, everyone has a choice to look at the day and say, can I make the most out of this day today with everything that I've been equipped with? And if I don't have the things that I'm equipped with, what can I go do to find those things? Who can I meet to maybe get access to those things? And just being inquisitive and being aware of seizing the day. I was not a person ever that I can remember growing up that would just um, lay around and for lack of a better term, be lazy to the point whenever, uh, you know, entrepreneurs all have their old war stories, right? I'm, I'm no exception. I have many of them. I've made many quote mistakes, uh, relationships and everything. And that drive is actually one of the best things that can help you, but it's also one of the biggest things that can hurt you. And the reason is, is because drive in itself, by itself, unabandoned drive, is like putting a kid in a candy store and telling him to just, just go crazy. There's no governance to it. There's no discipline to it. Um, there's no direction, you know, and there's really no focus. We hear that word a lot, focus, right? One of our best good friends, Jason Medley, talks about it. Actually, one of the reasons his life changed in a big way is because he got real clear with that word focus. But in the next kind of level from focus, it's hyper-focused. And it's really dialing in, you know, what is it specifically that you want to accomplish for whatever, for whatever reason? And I think that that drive, Jay, is something that can help you or hurt you. It can help you. It could push you every day. It also if you're not careful, you can almost let the drive control you instead of you control the drive. 
People talk about this cell phone all the time, saying, I'm a slave to this cell phone. The funny thing is this cell phone doesn't talk. Doesn't tell, I mean, I can't, I can't say talk cell phone. It won't, it won't talk to me unless I maybe have Siri or something on there, but it, you know, or you might believe the theory that we're all being listened to right now. But for the most purpose, if I just, I won't talk, I have control over this cell phone, Jay. But for yeah. a lot of people, this, this phone controls their life. Yeah. This phone controls their life. When it rings, I answer, right? I'm a slave to the device. Yep. I think that in a real way, you can be a slave to your drive. Yep. And I think that you just got to be careful and, 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 and think about, be, be aware that your drive is going to be something that you can use for good, <laughs> but also if you're not careful, the only thing that matters in life will be your drive. And that's not a good thing to be at either because your, your family, the people you love, you know, my gosh, just, just enjoying the day often is more important than just achieving something and just drive. Yeah. But, uh, well, and, you know, I think you'll agree with me that uh, this drive thing, it all relates to why am I doing what I'm doing? And until someone can really answer that, because it's not the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the money is only going to get us to a certain level right. of satisfaction. But if it's just the money we're wanting, then that's all a selfless, I mean, a selfish, that's all a selfish motive. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it comes down to the why I so let's So on real estate, State investing. One thing you said a moment ago, Corey, was there's all different facets, all different ways that people can get involved in real estate investing. And I'm sure since you've been in it now for 17 years, uh, you've probably been involved in just about every area or facet of real estate investing that you can. But what, what are, what kind of deals are you doing these days? What are you back to that word of our friend Jason, what are you focusing on these days as far as your real estate investing business goes? Yeah, great question. So we focus completely on wholesaling for our house, kind of our wholesaling division. Then we've been opening up a, a division for commercial, which is our multifamily. But we don't look at lease options. We don't look at, um, yeah, we, we're not, we're not doing a, we're not building a portfolio of single family houses. All we're looking at with our team for house Kings and speedy, our partners is we're just focusing on wholesaling. Yep. And the, the reason that we're doing that is because we know that we're passing deals that we could make money on. I, I know I am. I know I'm missing money on other opportunities on things. I could go lease option or I could, I could uh, go and fix and flip. I could start a fix and flip business. And I could. On the other side of that, we are now doing more deals than anybody I know of in our greater OKC area because all we're doing is a one trick pony. We, we get very boring on what we do, but we're getting better and better at doing that one thing. And so the time that we may have made money on that fix and flip or that lease option, the time it would have took away to focus on other deals or going down to get more deals. It, it seems, it seems like this kind of route of just getting better at this one thing has worked better for, for us. And uh, so wholesaling is what we've been completely focused on and uh, continuing to, to do really well in the greater OKC area. So for the benefit of those that, that may have just tuned in on, uh, on my show, um, give the simple definition to what in the world wholesaling is. What is wholesaling? Sure. So most people, they confuse wholesaling with assigning the contract and they're, they're different things. Okay. Wholesaling is whenever you are going and getting a contract on the property, right. And you're going in selling the contract to some other person, right? You're typically, this is from a double close. Now you can have the same language. You say you're a signing the contract or what, but you're, you're selling your contract over to another person, another end buyer that wants to, wants to buy the property. You're typically not taking these properties down. Now, some States and Oklahoma is not one of them, but some States you do need to take these properties down and, uh, and, and you need to check with your, you know, you need to check with your laws on that and check with um, your attorney on that. But in Oklahoma, we have a dry state. 
And what we can do is we, and we focus on a lot of cash transactions, right? And so that really helps you in a tremendous way, uh, be able to quickly turn around and find a cash buyer uh, for your deal. And basically uh, you have an A, a B and a C. The A is the homeowner, the B is you, the wholesaler, and C is the cash buyer, okay? And so you're always in the middle as a wholesaler whenever you are putting these two together and you basically make the difference between what you have a contract on, let's say you have it for 50, and you sell it to your cash buyer, say for 70, you make $20,000 basically for putting the two together and you're selling your contractual interest in that contract to that end buyer and you'll have any separate closing. So this C buyer over here doesn't see that you're buying the property for $20,000. You have a AB closing and then you have a BC closing. Okay. So because of that and the cash transactions, um, it really gives you the, flexibility to be able to do quite a few of these transactions in a month. We, we usually do anywhere from seven to nine a month. That's awesome. So, so you're not doing any other kinds of deals. You're 100% focused on this business model, this part of real estate investing right now, right? On single family. That is correct. On multifamily, of course, we're, you know, that's a whole other, whole other thing, but yeah, on single family, this is it. We're it's one trip, Pony really focusing on wholesaling. Well, I think there's a big lesson right there for all of us, for all the listeners and viewers, and that is focusing on one thing. In fact, it reminds me of the book that came out two or three years ago called The One Thing. One thing. <laughs> but, but focusing on this one strategy and just getting really, really good at it. Um, so one, no matter what, what uh, facet of real estate investing people are involved in or interested in, there's one thing that all the business models have in common, and that is we got to find the deals, right? Whether you're going to wholesale them, assign contracts, fix and flip, sell on, you know, work for equity, sell on rent to own, whatever, we still got to find the deals. Yes. So what are some of your favorite ways and strategies for finding the motivated sellers and the deals in today's market? Great question. So uh, I tend to look at data now to give me answers. And there's some great places that you can go to pull lists of highly motivated homeowners um, that have a certain amount of data points that is associated to them that can give you quote a weight um, that would be like a decision matrix weight on the people that are more likely to sell than the ones that aren't. That could be uh, the age of the uh, homeowner. That could be the age of the property. Certainly the price of the property, depending on what market you're looking at. Uh, it can be uh, uh, the, how big the house is, you know, uh, there's a lot of different factors. Uh, one of the ones I really like, uh, particularly, is a uh, data source called List Source. Yeah. So List Source is uh, common. Probably heard a lot of people talk about it before. However, there is a way that you can go into List Source and pull data from the rooftops if you put in an address instead of just putting in the zip code. Uh, one thing that we talked about at our mastermind meeting, uh, particularly was this kind of new way of pulling that data. And it's more of a sniper approach, Jay, versus a shotgun approach. A lot of people go in and they say, I want a list of this many people. And the reason they're doing that is because they want to spread the net wide so they can potentially get in, you know, some of the gold nuggets. Well, what if you knew where more of the gold nuggets were and then you wouldn't have to spread your net wide, i.e. meaning spend more marketing money, but you could make a smaller net, but you know wherever you're casting the net that there's fish in the pond. And I think that that has um, helped us really have a new realization of best way to use data, kind of the best, uh, best use of data. So list source is a, really great way uh, that you can get 
uh, motivated homeowners. Um, another place is going to your, your local county courthouse. Your local co county courthouse has a, a gold mine of data, but it may not be so easy for you to get it unless you're persistent. For example, there's code violations that every single county will provide you, but you have to be specific on what you're asking for. Um, you have to tell them you need a certain specific kind of code violation. Maybe you want high weeds. Um, you know, maybe you want uh, a break in and entry. You, there's all these different uh, codes that are being assigned to each one of these properties in the county for them to keep track of them. That is another place that you can find a gold mine of really great data. Another place is a place called successor data. Some people may not have heard that one. That might be a new one. So successor data is fantastic because it gives you a great source where you can go and not only just get probate type properties, but inheritance properties. Yes, inheritance properties, which is one of the most exciting and usually one of the most profitable uh, type of properties that you can find. And there's a great guy over there. His name's Maury. Just tell him Corey said hi. And he'll, he will walk you through how to pull the list at a successor data and uh, it is fantastic and it will show how many uh, properties a single person owns so they may own five properties and you get to see not only how many properties they have but you also get to see how old they are well if you see someone that maybe is 92 years old and they own seven or eight properties it may give you a little bit of an idea that and you know maybe it's time to have a deeper conversation with that type of person so we found some great deals with uh, successor data and probate and on inheritance. So those three sources, successor data, list source, and then going to the county and pulling that data, uh, Jay, I tell you, those are some great ones. That's awesome, Corey. Thank you for sharing and pulling the curtain back on some of your you know, top secret stuff. Now let's go back a few years. I don't know, it may not take a few years, but I'll let you decide how far to go back. So what comes to mind when you think about one of the biggest mistakes that you made in real estate investing and what can uh, our viewers and listeners learn from your experience? In other words, if you had to go back and do something differently, what would that look like from what you learned? If I had to go back, if I had the opportunity to go back today, I would learn about multifamily apartments. I would learn, Jay, about multifamily apartments. There's very few places that I know that you can make the value of a property worth over a 500,000 to a million dollars more by simply raising rents by $20 or $22 or $15. And once you understand forced appreciation, in multifamily assets. And once you understand how those properties are valued and what NOI is, uh, net operating income, and what your uh, gross rents are, what a P&L is, and really just understanding, I guess, more of the aspects of underwriting a multifamily asset, that's what I would do if I had the opportunity to go back because I believe there is so many great opportunities that people walk by on a daily basis and they go, wow, that looks great, but it's kind of big. And so uh, I'll stick to my single family thing. And they just get intimidated like me. I was intimidated when I saw a hundred or a 200 or my lands, a 300 unit apartment complex. And you see the thing and it's bigger than your whole you know, block and you're, and you're thinking, you know, some billionaire has to be the guy that can take that thing down. And then once you realize that there's a little thing called syndication and I, I, I when it comes to raising money, when it comes to how to uh, get into these multifamily apartments, by the way, we just closed on 128 uh, multifamily housing deal in Columbus, Georgia. So I'm, I'm telling you from experience, from raising money, from doing these things and still learning now, um, that's what I would do. I would go back and learn about these multifamily apartments. 
And if you can get in now and learn about it, it will be something that serves you from many, many years to come. That's awesome. Um, man, Corey, I could talk to you all day. So um, think about one of your real estate deals a recent uh, on single family. Let's come back over to single family. Uh, one of your single family deals, uh, you said you're doing like seven, eight, nine, or 10 a month or whatever. And I want to hear the story of the deal. And here's what I mean the story of the deal. Um, how'd you find the deal? Uh, what did the dollars look like? You know, how much were you able to get it under control for as far as a purchase price? How much money did you make? Um, how did you find your cash buyer? Uh, you know, just a, a 30,000 foot view of this deal. 30,000 foot view of the deal. Okay. Well, you're asking me to get a little granular. So let me pull up one of my uh, properties here that I think would be uh, answering that question a little bit. All right, here we go. So there's a property that, uh, that we closed on here recently, and uh, it was a pretty strong profit. Our profits right now will average anywhere from, let's say, eleven to thirteen thousand, usually around around twelve thousand. Right. Um, but what we found was, um, um, let's say, out of the hundred deals last year, you go and you say what are the five properties that made us the most amount of money? So that, that question is not something, even though it sounds very obvious that people tend to do one, if you're a real estate investor or really an entrepreneur, you're flying by the seat of your pants most of the time and you're just looking for the next deal. That's one. All right. If you want to get real Two, uh, if you are a type of person that is, uh, likes to collect data, and you could track things, right? Um, that's happened in the past. You're worried about what's coming up. You're not worried about what's happened in the past. So it's, it's a dull, boring conversation to go back on that. Three, it takes time. It takes time to go and dig in and find in that data, uh, you know, where the, where the gold is. But what if you did that and you found that there were some correlating factors of those five most profitable deals that you did out of a hundred last year. So first off, you're already in the 5%. Now, second of all, you're looking at your deals and how much money that these things made, which is significantly more than the, the 12,000 average. So we did this. And what I found was neighborhoods were actually very similar. They were very close together where we had our actually most profitable deals, the neighborhoods. Well, it just so happens that there's a way that you can get in front of those homeowners in those neighborhoods that's a lot different than just shotgunning out your, uh, your, your traditional way of marketing. So we found our most profitable deals in the neighborhoods, Jay, and we sure enough got a, own, a homeowner. Once we figured out where this was, we thought, well, wonder if they have more than one in there. Sure enough, we did. We found another one, and the profit on this deal um, was just at sixty-one thousand dollars. Nice. We bought it for about eleven thousand dollars, and yeah. we sold it for seventy-seven five, I believe. Wow. The funny thing is, the person that bought the property from us got a loan for. I think around 90,000 and right. they flipped it for $130,000. Wow, mercy. Big profits in this deal, right? Okay, big profits in this deal. Now, some people are going, I can't, there's no way I can buy $11,000 house. Don't worry, on average, our deals are, you know, 60, $70,000 uh, deals. But I bet you, if you go back and you look at your deals last year that you did, the most profitable ones, and you started to draw a little correlating polygon to match those up, you're gonna find that there were some things that were very similar. The area was similar. The house, um, the age of the house was similar. 
Well, you don't even have to worry about uh, targeting single family homes because you're in a neighborhood. You know, they're all single family homes. Right. So, you know, there's, there's going to be certain things uh, about that area, about that property that uh, you'll be able to uh, really hone in on. And by the way, isn't it funny that the property that you just sold, you know, uh, last year, they probably have another property uh, uh, down the block that may be something similar. And once you find out uh, where, where some of those nuggets are, for us, our most profitable areas, essentially, then you can start doing things that most people don't do. You can, what if you could direct mail if I have a list of 10,000 names, Jay, it's hard for me to send a, uh, a FedEx package for $10, right? That's a pretty expensive mailer, right? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I could send a FedEx package to 500 people, that's, that's a much different thing. And I promise you that the biggest open rate that you're ever going to have in your life for direct mail is from a FedEx package. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah. So uh, just getting more creative, figuring out ways to get in front of the right people. And uh, when you do that, I believe that you're going to find the gold. So good nuggets in there. Yeah, that's great stuff. So we're almost out of time. I got three rapid fire questions for you. So number one, uh, what is one of your top personal habits that you have that you would say contributes to your overall success? Every morning I wake up and say my worst day is someone else's paradise. I say it in the shower every single morning. I've said it for years and years. It completely uh, sets my day uh, on, a, on a ground where I'm, I'm, I feel like God's uh, you know, really giving me a center and that gives me a perspective that no matter what happens in the day, somebody would trade my worst day for their paradise. And it, it just gives me a new perspective. Well, speaking of God, other than the Bible, what's one book that's had more uh, impact on your overall success than any other book or books? Without a doubt, as a man thinketh. As a man, as a man thinketh, um, is, is a, just an unbelievable book. James Allen, uh, was the guy that when everybody went to the bars, he would go home and write books and read books and he'd read scripture. And, um, James Allen was an extraordinary man. And you can actually look at a lot of his different writings. Uh, there are not many of them, but as a man thinketh is a short book. If you've ever read it, it I mean, if you haven't read it, you have to buy it. You just have to go buy it. You have to get it on Audible. If you're listening on Audible, you can listen to it. I, read it. Listen to it. I mean, there's so many nuggets in that book that basically gives you intention for the day. What you think about, uh, you know, Sean Terry, my, my partner and good friend, he said, um, thoughts are things, right? I don't know if he came up with it, but I always remember he said that. Thoughts are things. So when we go throughout our day and we're thinking all this stuff that's, that's bad and negative and you know, all this stuff, we are bringing these thoughts in a real way to our life and we're thinking about them more. So we're putting our focus on the negative things and therefore we start attracting these other situations in our life. Uh, and you know, the, the, the law of attraction wasn't something that was just, you know, made up. It was actually a biblical law of reciprocity. There's a, there's a, there's a biblical connotation to, to that. And, um, you know, so as a man thinketh is one of my favorite books of all time. I'll give you a second one too. Um, it is, uh, the second one is, um, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Yes. That's yeah, I was 20, I was 24 years old. Uh, I had just moved out to Texas and one of my dad's best friends sent me that book as a gift because I was just starting my business career. So amen to that. And then finally, Corey, um, what's the best advice you've got for a new real estate investor? Learn to be an expert learner. Be an expert learner. You know, um, you think sometimes that 
um, you know it all or you get prideful and you learn one, but be an expert learner, be a student of what you learn um, because there's so many people that have uh, great things that they have achieved in their life and you can if you can get a glimmer of that if you can take a few nuggets from that i even say sometimes if you have the opportunity work for somebody for completely free that you respect and you know that has integrity and you know that you have something about that's something about that person that you want to learn or whatever work for free for them ask tell me you'll go get coffee for them you'll go go put some signs up in their yard for them you'll just just be there and serve them and from that you're investing in them and fr from that i believe that you'll be able to get a return you know from that i think so often it's easy to look at what can i get you know before you ask what can i give and jay you're you're a you're a complete just uh example of a, a go giver right someone that just gives and helps and then f from that investment things come back in your life, you know, um, not even expecting it. It just happens that way. Right. But whenever you're that go giver and they have that go giver mentality, it really changes things. So if you're new and starting out, what can you give? Not what can you get should be your, your focus. Yeah. Well, thank you for those uh, kind words, Corey. And speaking of the phrase go giver, you know, uh, I never heard of the book Go Giver until Scott Myers uh, gave his talk on it at yeah. uh, Collective Genius, and I don't know how many I don't know how many of those books I have now given, <laughs> given them away, <laughs> given away because I may not just resonate with that book so much. So yeah, everybody that's viewing or listening, um, order the book The Go Giver. It's not a long book. It's like a it's like a long parable, and um, fantastic book. Coy, my lands, what a great guest you have been on the show. In fact, one of the best guests I have had on the show since we started it. And I know that we've got a lot of viewers and listeners that are going to want to get connected with you and continue to, you know, uh, learn from you. I know you've got your own podcast, but I think you've got a free gift uh, for all of our viewers and listeners. So how can people connect with you? Sure. Thank you very much, Jay, again, for having me. Um, people on their phones, they can just text the word profits to 38470, 38470. And um, they can get a book, which is called the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Quick Start Guide. We've had tens of thousands of people uh, get that book. It's just a very short book, just straight to the point. I mean, very, very simple. Uh, just giving you some good nuggets there. Uh, some of the things we talked about, in fact, are mentioned on their list source, some other things. Also, just connect with me on social media, Corey Boatwright, or go to my website, uh, which is real estate investing profits, real estate investing profits uh, com, and, uh, and then they can also get access to the podcast, which if you just type in my name in iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play, um, they'll have that, which is our uh, Profit Masters podcast, which we interview people like Jay and some amazing investors out there doing incredible things where they give up a lot of their uh, time and just share and serve you with things they've learned and the tools that they have, things that can help you. So yeah, those are some uh, places to connect. Awesome. So one more time, Corey, uh, tell everybody the uh uh, what to text uh, the numbers sure. and uh, what they and what they type in to get that free report one more time. Yeah, it's text three eight four seven zero three eight four seven zero, and I believe the words profit or profit either one word, but profit probably be fine. Profit and uh, you'll get automatic automatically a. Uh, <laughs> A link <laughs> will be sent to you. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Corey, thank you so much for coming here on the show and look forward to seeing you in just a few short weeks at our next uh, mastermind meeting there. Wow. Thank you for pulling the curtain back and, uh, and sharing your tips and strategies with my viewers. Everybody get connected with Corey Boatwright and your life will be enriched because of it. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, here's to taking your real estate investing success to the next level. Thank you, Corey. Thanks, Governor Connor. <laughs> Bye. Bye for now. We'll see you. Bye-bye.